Hey friends, it's Dimitri with Nebraska Streetwear. Today I want to talk about five ways to save on printing costs. Now, when I started out my brand, I wish I would have had a video like this to kind of guide me so that I would be really focused on exactly what I'm trying to do in terms of designing for like a t-shirt or a hoodie. And it kind of helps you, you know, be on the right track, especially when you have a really, really low budget and you're just, you don't have a lot of money and you're trying to start a brand, knowing stuff like this is super, super helpful. So before I go into the five ways, really simple ways of saving on costs for printing, I'm going to give you guys two objectives that you have to follow for this. The first one is that these methods and your thinking overall, the point of it is not to reduce the quality of the printing or the t-shirt so no reduction in quality that is a very important parameter when you're trying to figure out ways to save or be strategic when you're trying to print and whatnot so for instance the basic printing method like screen printing using plastisol inks and other forms of ink you don't want to be going from that point down to like doing direct to garment printing which is a little bit less in quality or vinyl transfer which is less in quality you have to have a standard of screen printing or uh, embroidery stuff like that so we're not going down in quality when we are trying to save on costs for this the second parameter that's also important is uh, communication so what I mean by that is when you're designing something, a graphic for a t-shirt or hoodie or something like that, what you're trying to do is you're effectively trying to communicate something to your audience, their customer. So that's basically just the artwork itself. What does it mean? What does it represent? Does it work with the color choices and the style and all of that kind of stuff for your artwork? Will your cost saving measures reduce the communication that you're trying to do with your print and I will kind of elaborate more on that here. So the first step to saving on printing costs is the number of screens. So what that means effectively in layman's terms is number of colors that you can pick for your print. So when you are making a design, each color, each new color in it that is getting printed is a separate screen. So if you have a t-shirt with three colors, they have to make three different screens and each screen costs more money to make. So if you have one screen, like I'll give you an example, one screen versus like seven screens, obviously, and that obviously translates to seven colors. It's gonna cost the print shop a lot less money to make one screen and print on that rather than making seven screens, seven colors. And obviously that cost sav savings translates to you. So you end up paying less for your artwork. And I'll give you an example. Here's a one color, one screen print. And this is probably my, one of my most popular designs, like best selling, sold, like thousands of these and then here's an example of a three color print it has white gray and black and I'm gonna go back to the first point in communication so if I try to make this design solely in white I don't think I'd be able to communicate effectively this design because it really does need several colors to get all of the depth into the image because I'm printing a photograph. Now obviously there are methods that you can use one color to make a photograph but that really depends on the photo and the artwork and the context and that kind of stuff but for this one I knew I had to have the base minimum of three colors the white black and gray in order to get that photograph across whereas with this one this is a famous Bible illustration and I remixed it and redesigned it into a t-shirt and the original artwork itself was actually one color because this is a wood engraving. So back then they would engrave in wood, then they'd put ink on it and press it onto paper and that's what it was. So the original artwork itself 
you know, you know, the horse and the rider, it is a one color. So it wouldn't make sense to even add colors to that or to make it really wild. The artwork is standalone. It makes sense just as a one color. So that's what I mean by the effective communication. Does it make sense for what you're trying to do? So when you're trying to save costs, you don't always want to do a one color artwork or you don't always want to do a three or four or five. It really depends on what you're trying to do. Let's go down to the second point on the cost savings, and that is color swapping. Typically, print shops will always charge a small fee. It's not really a, a large fee, maybe like 10 to $20 to swap colors, but it is a little cost that's gonna be added on to your final product. And what this means is you might have a one color t-shirt. Let's just use this for example again. But let's say that I am making, and this is one screen, but let's say I wanted to make a white variant of it. So I'm gonna be releasing a red variant and a white variant of the ink. Well, even though it's one screen, they still have to stop production and clean off the screen and then put on another color to start printing on there. So that is just basically more work for them and they have to put that into their process, which means that the cost is gonna go up. So if you are having a release and you think that you can get away with just one color on a t-shirt and it's gonna work just fine for that release, you should probably go ahead and just not do any color swapping. And I actually suggest this as well. And the reason why is because you can make, let's say for this t-shirt, I only made a hundred units and it's a limited edition, but it was really, really popular and it sold out. Well, I can reintroduce the same design, but in a new color. So it's still limited, even though it's the same design. So like, let's say if I release this in January in red, but then it sold out in February, I can re-release it, but in white and it's still limited and it's still using the same screen. So that's a perfect example of kind of being a little bit strategic and not color swapping and releasing both of them at the same time. Like even if you did release 100 red and 100 white at the same time, I would say it's smarter to split it off and re-release it at a separate time in a separate color if you're gonna do that. And the third one is custom colors. Print shops will always charge you more for custom colors. So if you have an artwork and it has just really bizarre, weird colors that don't match to their standard list of colors, typically print shops have probably somewhere between like 20 and 30 standard colors where they can pretty much get really close to what your artwork is trying to communicate. But if you have a very, very specific color and it totally needs to be that color, they're gonna obviously charge you more because they have to mix that color and then they have to print on it and usually they will also store that color because they're gonna have leftovers of it. So that's another thing. You might wanna pick designs that have very simple colors. Typically like you can get away with a lot with just doing black ink, white ink, uh, red ink. I use a lot of yellow ink, that was popular in designs. Um, back to this example, white, black, and gray. There's so many designs you can do with those simple colors. And what I would suggest doing is asking your printer or manufacturer what is a list of their basic colors. And if they do charge extra for custom colors, they probably will. But it's good to have that list. So at least you have a reference and you can make strategic decisions from that point on when you are making your artwork. The fourth way to save is placement. So in general, when you are printing on t-shirts, the cheapest prints that they're gonna be able to do is basically like a simple uh, print on the front or a simple print on the back. When you request prints like on the sleeves or like the sleeves this way, or at, like near the hem, the weird parts of the print, they typically have to charge more as well because uh, there's more strategy involved in that for them and they have to do certain things to make sure everything lines up and they have to it's just so much easier for them when they just print straight onto a t-shirt on the front or the back and i'll give you kind of an example of that so this was a a two screen job so we have one screen here that's one color and one screen on the back but for this one on this side, it's a special placement, so obviously it does cost a little bit more. Whereas for this one, it's just a standard print on the back, 
where they just place the screen and do it and there's not really much you know special placement involved in that this was also a very popular t-shirt um, so definitely think about that. Do you need to have your artwork or details in a specific place? Does it make sense? Or can you get away with just having it on the front or having it on the back in a simple way? Um, but back, it goes back to this, the effective communication. Does it make sense for the design to be on the front or the back? Or does it really need to be in a special spot? You have to figure that out for yourself with what you're trying to communicate with your design and artwork. And the final simple way to save on printing costs is number of units. I mentioned this in previous videos. So obviously if you're gonna be printing 25 t-shirts for the most part, it's gonna cost you more per, per unit rather than printing 100 or 150 or 200 or 1,000. Typically printers have price breaks I would say probably around like 25 to then, then to 50, then 75, then 100, and so on and so on. And you can ask your printer what price breaks do they have so that you can kind of uh, play around with that and see what you can get away with. Let's say when you're starting out, you like are you really only have enough money for like 25 or 50 t-shirts, but then your audience starts growing and you have more demand. Obviously, it's gonna be a better idea for you to start slowly increasing the amount of inventory that you're going to be purchasing which means the unit cost for each t-shirt is going to go down so let's say that you're doing like 25 one color t-shirts you might be paying something like maybe 14 13 bucks per t-shirt but when you're printing like 150 or 200 of them that price can go down to like nine dollars eight dollars depending on the quality of the blank what kind of shirt you're using so that is also another way of saving on printing costs but this one it's probably gonna kick in more as you're growing as a brand when you're starting out I would not recommend just dumping and buying a thousand t-shirts because you don't have an audience and you haven't built up a following and you don't have repeat customers or any customers at all so I would say just start out small and this can be something that you save on later down the road as you grow. Just scale your inventory as your brand is scaling. So yeah, those are five simple ways to save on printing costs without reducing the quality of your t-shirt or the actual print and without reducing the effective communication that you're trying to do with your design. If you guys got any value of this video or if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.